YouTube. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if this is your first time here, welcome and be prepared for the crazy, which is the, the C and TCTN. For those of you who know, it's chapstick time. I did my base face, but y'all know I gotta wait for y'all to do my chapstick. Y'all do. Maybe one day I'll stop doing this on camera. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do you like the goofiness of me putting on chapstick before I start videos? <laughs> or is it just like, why is she still doing that? Like, she knows she's doing a video. Today I'm going to play with the Pat McGrath Mothership 3 Subversive Palette. And I'm going to recreate a, one look on each eye from Chris Love's Luxe. This is my first time using this palette. I have not swatched anything in this palette. This is what she looks like. And this is the paper with the names on it. And so we're going to see um, some of the shades she used her finger. I am not a fan of using my finger because then it just gets everywhere on whatever I touch. And... I'm just one of those people where I'm just like, I don't want anything on my fingers. But, so we're going to jump in with the eye primer. So other than not using my finger, <laughs> I am going to recreate her looks and we'll see how they come out. And at the end of this video, I will give you my opinion on... The Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Mega Celestial Divinity Palette. And this is what this looks like. I have played around with it. I'll give you my opinions on that at the end of this video. So we will see. All right, blending out my eyeshadow primer. Again, I don't like using my fingers, like even for eyeshadow primer. I, I just don't. <laughs> Cream blush, don't like using my fingers. Concealer, don't like using my fingers. Eyeshadow, don't like using my fingers. <laughs> I'm using the Fenty Eyeshadow Primer because it is a tacky primer. And so I am hoping that with the Celestial Shades in here, it will help them stick. And so I'm kind of wondering if I want to do, excuse me, my lid colors first to give those shades the best chance of sticking to my lid versus doing my transition shade, which may cover part of my lid, which may make it more difficult for some of the shadows to stick. And so I think that's what I'm gonna do. And so I did write down what she used where, and instead of my finger, I'm gonna use an angled eyeshadow brush. And I have, I believe, four of these. So we're gonna go in on this eye. We're gonna put, Blitz Amethyst on the lid, which is this shade here, this shade down here. So we're going to put that on the lid, tapping off my brush. I am aware that with your finger, you can get the color to show up more intensely. I am aware of that. I really want to see how these perform on their own. And with shimmer shades, with metallic shades, I do press and then slide. I don't tap. And that's my way of eliminating, eliminating some fallout. And I also tap off my brush after I dip it in the shadow. Down here, it looks patchy. Up here, wrong eye. It does not look patchy, I don't think. I'm gonna take a smaller angled brush, the same color, because to me it's looking patchy down here. And it may be the lighting, and it may be because this is a dual chrome. And so because of how the colors are showing up, and the lighting may be why it's looking patchy to me. This is the first brush that I used. And now I'm gonna very lightly sweep this up and over. I'm gonna take a little bit more and tap that into my actual crease. 
my lid colors are always taken to my crease so that when I look directly at someone they can still see a little bit of the lid color because looking straight you only see a thin line of the lid and so that's how dipping into that color again I get my lid colors to show up a little more by taking them up into the crease and not just only putting them on the lid so you see what I mean and you can see it up here even when I'm looking at you because it's in my crease area and actually above the crease so that's what that looking like and I do like that the next shade Astro Ghost Orchid as a lid topper and she did use her finger and that shade is this one down here and I have a feeling I do have some fallout with that shade I do have a feeling it is going to fall out a lot because I'm putting it on top of another <laughs> color without using my finger so we're going to see if that does anything you let me know because to me it does not I see a little bit of the shift from that color but not much let me know if it's showing up for you or if it just looks the same so we're going to leave that like that then we're going to go into extreme black this color down here and that she put in her outer corner so we're going to take another flat shade of brush hmm. <laughs> And this, is, and this one is a matte, so I don't anticipate having any problems with this one not showing up or with fallout. I like that this has a mirror, and that's what I'm using to see if there is fallout. Ooh. I'm going to go back in with that small shader brush and in with that black. To be more detailed with where this is going on my outer corner and I'm doing this on top of white paper just so I can see like how much <laughs> is actually falling out and to also keep it contained even though I have a cloth here because once you get up uh, <laughs> I was gonna curse um, shimmer shades <laughs> or glitters on whatever cloth you have down it's hard to get it out and so then I end up just having to wash the cloth and I don't want to be washing cloths every other day or every time I do makeup so that's there uh, okay I'm going to sweep this over into the crease a little bit just because I just want some more depth there and I still need to lay down the transition shade I'm liking that I would kind of just leave that like that but we're not so we're going to take she used Lazarus Lazarus in the crease which is this color which is going to go above my crease wait a minute Lazarus is this one yeah it looks um, like a metallic in the pan but showing it to you, it looks matte. That's why I, I looked at it two or three times because I thought I was pointing at the wrong color. And so that she put in her crease. I'm going to put it above the crease. So that's going to go here. I like how that is blending out. Even though it looks metallic, it seems like it's performing as a matte. I do have quite a bit of fallout on my face. Not as much as the Celestial palette. Alright, so I'm liking how this looks. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> and then she used... Oh, I messed up. She used Deep Shade. She used Deep Shade as a transition. And then she used this in the crease. So I'm kind of backwards. So I'm still going to go ahead and use this shade. Stuck my finger in it by accident. Also as my transition shade. And then I'll go back. That is a deeper shade. So then I am going to go back to Lazarus. Lazarus. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. To blend that out. So I'm going to wipe that brush off. 
gonna go back into Lazarus and put that on top of that and to blend it out that top corner or the top edge of it hmm I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit this is looking really dark my fault I'm gonna take and I feel like this is gonna be a mistake <laughs> Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back with <laughs> Blitz Amethyst. And we're going to pack some more of that on the lid and into the crease. Because I feel like this is just too dark all the way up here. So we're going to pack that shade here. Just so that darkness isn't so wide of an area. So we're just patting that on. I'm going to take some more of it. I'm going to go back with that small brush and use Astro Ghost Orchid, this topper shade, and we're going to put that back in the inner corner. I'm wondering if I want to take that, I do, <laughs> as a brow bone highlight. I'm going to go back with that small one we use for the black color. We're going to place that again on the outer corner. Just want to pack some more of that on there. Going to going to take a clean blending brush, nothing on it at all whatsoever, and we're just going to blend this. I'm going to feather in that black and lightly, and you see I'm holding the brush all the way at the tip, and lightly just blend this area. Um, I don't see a lower outline, but what I'm going to do. A lower outline a lower lash line color so I'm going oh geez do I want to do the black I do want to do the black but I'm going to take um, this shade first that we used on the lid that's the wrong shade and it's not picking up at all on this brush <laughs> oh Lord so we're going to take this brush somewhat of a pencil brush that first shade we used and we're going to put that on our lower lash line it got in my eye, guys. Me and glitter shadows do not get along. Oh my gosh, it got in my eye. I don't have my contacts in, so it's not as worse as it could be. And so then I'm going to take this black on the same brush. I'm going to put that right here. Oh my gosh. No bueno. And I'm going to wipe that brush off. And I'm going to take this shade. And we're going to put that right here. So that is the first look. What do you think? I didn't do liner. I'll do liner at the end. But so far, this is what we got. And if my eye is turning red, it's because there is eyeshadow in my eye. Gigabyte on the lid, this shade here. Now this eye is tearing already. Ugh. I like this color. I am pressing and dragging, pressing and dragging. And I am liking how it's showing up. And I have just a tiny bit of fallout. 
I like this. I'm going to take some more of that same brush. I'm going to pat it up into my crease area. That is what that is looking like. I like this color. Um, it's pulling a little cool tone on me, and I don't particularly like myself in cool tones, and so I'm kind of on the fence with that color. Then she took Skin Show. Then she took Skin Show Fever. This color up here in the top corner, on the first third of the lid. I'm going to take another angled brush. That's what that's looking like. She used black metal on the outer corner, this middle shade here. I'm gonna take a, a clean flat angle brush, a small one. I can see glitter like on my face, like when I look down, I see sparkles. <laughs> sure if this is showing up and I know some of you are saying that's why you're supposed to use your finger it is showing up some I can see the gradient in the shadow and I do like how that mixes together oh, I can feel it falling out I know I'm not using my finger and I didn't wet my brush I know I know I know I know I know let's just calm down <laughs> or I should just <laughs> calm down right I like this color combination. I just, I'm not really liking that lid shade on me. And it reminds me of a shadow, um, a Natasha Denona eyeshadow in the Metropolis palette. I liked the look I did because um, it was kind of grungy. And it was, I want to say it's a metallic shade, but it might have been one of her creamy mattes. And even though I did like that look too, because of the tone of that color, even though I like the color, I didn't really like it as much on me. So now we're going to do our transition shade, which she used deep shade, this shade right here up top in the middle. And so we're going to use that and put that as our transition shade. This shade is dark on me. Ooh. So I'm going to blend it down a little bit, and then I'll probably go back over it with that lid shade like I did on the other eye. We're at 18 minutes already. I'm going to try and speed up where I can. So wherever I'm not talking, I'll try to speed up. Even though I do like doing these in real time, so that if you are doing these in real time, you can have an idea of how long it would take. I think that's a little dark for me for a transition shade. So we're going to... So we're going back with that lid color and we're going to just take that up like we did on the other side. Just so that dark area is not so dark. We're going to take that black again, not the black. This middle shade. Actually, it is called black metal. And we're going to apply that again on the outer corner area. I like how these colors go together. I do. Blending brush with no additional color. We're going to feather in that black metal shade. And then we're going to lightly just blend this up here very lightly. I didn't do a brow bone highlight. What shade am I going to use for that? None. We're not going to do one. <laughs> what did I use for my inner corner? Skin Show Fever. All right, we're going to use that as a brow bone highlight. Skin Show Fever is this shade up here. And we're also going to take that right here. And we're going to take, I'm going to wipe that off and take black metal. 
across the lower line. Why does it look like it's colored down there already? Hmm. I promise you it wasn't. Oh, you know what? That's my regular skin color. Um, the area I missed putting concealer on. <laughs> so that's why it was like this dark line right here. That's my skin color. Because I do have under eye discoloration. Under eye discoloration. And then we're going to take the lid color. And put that under here. I'm going to speed up through eyeliner. So this is look number one. Let me know what you think. And this is look number two. Let me know what you think. I do like the looks. I'm still on the fence with this tone, but because you don't really see a lot of that green when I'm looking at you and how I blended it in with the brown and then the black on the outer corner, I do like the look. I do not like all the fallout. And I'll tell you why it's a div Oh, I got like clumps on my nose. <laughs> and I find that it doesn't dust away easily. Granted, I do have on a full face, but still, it doesn't dust away. It's a deterrent for me <laughs> to use um, shimmer shades that have fallout because most days, especially now that I'm retired and I'm not working, if I have a Zoom call or something, I'll say, okay, I'll just do, you know, put on foundation, concealer, just like a base face. And then later on in the evening, I'll be like, oh, let me just play it. I see glitter like all over my phone. Later on in the day, I know I'm frustrated. That's, I'm, I'm just trying to, and every time I look down, I can see glitter like on my face. And there's a whole puddle of glitter on the piece of paper that's here. So later on in the day, I may be like, oh, you know, let me just play in a palette and do a look. And so it's not, it doesn't always make sense for me to do an eye look first, to sit down and have to think about, okay, what look am I going to do? Do I use this kind of brush? Should I wet the brush? Should I use my finger? Which I don't like to do either one of those two things. Anyway, I just want to put my brush in it and it works. I put the brush in these and it worked. The colors show up nicely. I do like both of the looks. I didn't use my fingers, didn't wet my brush. I, I like the looks, I really do. But this under here, like last minute, if I were to say, okay, let me just slap on some eyeshadow to go out and meet a friend for lunch or for dinner, I would have to like wash my whole base face off do my eye look and then redo my base face and it doesn't work for me to clean up with my marcella micellar water under my eye or a makeup wipe remover under my eye because i still have to rinse that off because my skin is so sensitive even with products that says you do not have to rinse i still have to wash my face after those products and so it doesn't make sense for me to do an eye look and then use my marcella water I'm, I'm probably still saying it wrong or makeup remover wipe to wipe it off because I'm still going to need to take some soap and water and wash my face. And how do you do that without messing up your eye makeup? I know this has turned into a rant and I, I want to apologize, but then I don't. Let me know if you also have this issue. <laughs> when I was working, I would do my eye look and then do my base face because it wasn't really an issue or it was a little bit of fallout where I can just put concealer over it and then my foundation it will cover it up but this here like no one told me how tenacious her shadows were like in other shadows that have fallout that I've used I was able to just brush it away this does not brush away and so I don't I don't know I, I don't know what to do um I don't know. 
For those of you who have skin like mine and you can't leave micellar water on without rinsing it off or makeup remover wipes without still needing to wash your face, tell me what you do when you do your eye look first and then clean up underneath and then do your base face. Like what technique works for you when you're the type of person that needs to wash all that stuff off in between your eye look and doing your base face? And I hope that question made sense. I do really like the looks though, but I'm just kind of bummed like. <laughs> and I do know sometimes doing a base face minus concealer and then just put concealer on to clean it up. And I have done that before, but not with this type of fallout. And so I, I like the looks, but I'm kind of bummed at the same time. And so thank you, Chris Loves Lux for doing these looks. Hopefully I did you justice in recreating them and I don't really look crazy. <laughs> and so thank you guys for watching. I'll do a separate video of my personal review on this palette because this video is already long. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here and you will see me in the next video.